All right, YouTubers, we're going to replace the crankshaft position sensor on a 2003 Lancer Oz Rally Edition. Never done this before, so we'll see how it goes. So, YouTubers, got the upper timing belt cover off. That seemed to be completely unnecessary. A uh, couple uh, 10 millimeter bolts to get out. Simple. Problem is down at the bottom. Ended up taking off some of the panels here and trying to get the lower cover off, hoping to be able to do it without getting the harmonic balancer off and in my first problem. I got my wrench stuck behind it on there. So I can't get it out. It looks like this guy's gonna have to come off. So that sounds like fun. So we'll be back in a little bit. All right, quick progress update. I got the pulley wheel off. Had to use an impact wrench. First it wasn't uh, working, got kind of nervous, then realized my air was turned down. Turned the air up, came right off, and slipped right off. Also I had to take the alternator off up here, or undo it so I can get it loosened. It's new because I broke it before, so that's why it's nice and shiny. All right, YouTubers, quick update. Got the cover off. The trick to that was to get the power steering bracket off. That's that thing hanging there. And the it's not going to come off because this bolt here, can't quite get up there, isn't going to come out. So it just hangs there and it's loose enough. You can get the, the bottom cover off. And there is our sensor right right there you can see the connectors on it back to the connectors right there so let's get that guy off so we got the sensor off just has this little bracket on it There's the old one and the new one and the only trick to this has been getting that power steering bracket off I ended up having to use this wrench and my big bar. It's easier to do it from underneath the car rather than on top. So let's put this guy on and see see what happens. Alright, so we got the cover back on. And there's our sensor right up in there. And uh, something maybe to consider. Maybe consider uh, putting your best looking bolts down here in the bottom. In case you ever have to do this again, put your, or put ones that are bad and easy to reach places, potentially consider that. And we're going to go up top and get the top on and get this power steering bracket tightened up. That should be fun again. And I'll see you up top. We're up top. Here is that power steering bracket right there. Again, I can't get any of my normal wrenches on it. So that's a tough one to get on, tighten those up. The only odd bolt on the bottom cover is the one that goes up here, right up there, and that's a big long one. Looks like, oops, like this one right here. It's this guy. And I'd use my little ratchet to do that because the big one doesn't fit in there. Get that on, tighten that up, put the belts back on, and then put that cover back on and we'll be back so we're back trying to get the upper time belt cover on and having a little problem with this little seal right here keeps it's gonna focus there keeps wanting to fall off so be careful when you're putting this on so that doesn't fall off and disappear that would probably not be good so just watch that be back in a bit it's a quick update almost done if you end up like me and you have one of these 10 millimeter bolts left, wondering where it needs to go, it probably needs to go right down here. I can't quite get down there. Right down there. Look right down there. It's right by the upper connector. If you can get down there, that's probably where it goes. Just thought I'd give you that note. 
We're back under the car. That hard to reach bolt is that guy right there. It's right behind this line. I found the easiest way to get that off was to use one of these. Thankfully I had it, but I would recommend it. It's 10 millimeter one for that again. I'll be back. All right, so we're getting things back together. Little note, this little bracket up on top, up on here, that little wire seemed to fit nicely. Routing it, yeah, let's get this a little bit. There we go. When you're going down the bottom there, and put the, the grounding wire behind the bracket. And then this guy over here might want to be careful for this guy. Notice that it goes right into plastic. Be careful when you crank that down, it could crack it maybe. And that uh, that wire just pops off on this little clip here. Just pull this, pull this up, and it unclips. So we'll be back. So we're back underneath. Put the pulley back on. Don't forget to put this on if you've left it someplace else. It only goes on one way because it's keyed, so you don't have to worry about it. And then put the pulley on, and it should just slide on. Mine's in beautiful shape. And just slide right on there, and put this giant monster in there. It's clean, yeah, pretty clean. All right, we'll get this back together, get the belts on, and we'll be back. A little tip when you're putting your alternator, alternator back on, remember, or when you're taking it off, there are two bolts. There's this one on the tensioner, and then there's another one down back underneath in the bottom that you can get to. Make sure that you loosen them both before trying to take the tension off your belt, else you will do like I've done in need to replace your tensioner when you break it. We'll be back. All right, we're back. Got everything back together, no extra bolts. It's a good thing. I highly recommend putting the alternator belt on first before putting the other belt on, unless you like those ring puzzles. The bent nail puzzles. Uh, we can go through the tools I used. Help you out as you're preparing. Hopefully you got some penetrant. Uh, my tool holder. We've got, let's get the focus in there. There we go. Got 10 millimeters for all those guys up there. Got a 12 millimeter here. 14 millimeters for those guys. We got a 22. This is for the crank uh, pulley. Got a 21 up there for wheels, impact wrench, various wrenches, screwdrivers, sorry for the focus there, and my other bars, pry bar type things. Um, oh, we got the giant jack that weighs more than it lifts. Uh, and uh, lights, oh, got Zebra Light SC52. It's double A light, highly, highly recommend. Goes with me everywhere. And we got a Phoenix on my head. Headlight. That's a four double A. I think it's a Phoenix F4. But I uh, hope this helps you out for anybody watching. And uh, would I like to do this again? Nope. Would I do it if I had to? Sure. Why not? I wish you well and good providence.